it's time for Ion MPI, and special thanks for DigiKey for helping Ion MPI happen. This has been a fantastic partnership, and we are pleased to have the next Ion MPI. Hi, Ion MPI. All, All right. right. With what? an intro like that, I can't go wrong. And stay tuned because we will have a special treat. You asked for it. We have the extended version of that. We'll do that right after we finish showing this week's Ion MPI. What is it, Lady Ada? Okay. Well, um, this Ion MPI is actually kind of interesting because last week we did an ST chip. And uh, normally I try to like switch it up, but I was uh, subscribed to DigiKey's new products RSS feed, uh, which I recommend people go to. It's uh, in the post that will come up um, afterwards. And um, I got a notice of a new STM32L4 chip, and I'm always kind of interested in new microcontrollers because you definitely see like companies coming up with new chips when they see what competitors are doing and they come out with something a little bit better. This is a little bit like a skateboard trick uh, improvement over the SAMD51, and this is the STM32L4P5, which is uh, a totally fresh new um, Cortex M4 chipset from the STM32. So it's got kind of what I like. It's a M4, you know, with FPU, and it's running at 120 megahertz. And it's got a lot of pins, but it comes in a bunch of different packages from like a 48 QFN all the way up to like a 196 VGA. Um, it's got like, you know, five mega sample per second um, ADC. It's got dual DACs. It's got like built-in op amps for some reason. Uh, all these like cool peripherals that you expect. It's got CAN bus, which um, is a nice addition. ST has a nice well-documented CAN bus. Uh, it's got uh, full speed USB, not high speeds. That's like the one thing that is kind of standard. Monster. And uh, yeah, I got a, a discovery board. Uh, there's also a nuclear board. Um, you can get the chips right now. They're, they're only available in kind of two sizes, but more packages. The data sheet says there's more packages coming. So there's this massive 144 QFP, which is on the uh, Nucleo 144. And there's also this discovery board, which has the BGA, which I think it's, it's actually this chip in the middle here. So it's like a super, maybe it's this chip. Hold on. It's this chip, yeah. So this is like a ultra fine pitch. It's like a point, probably a 0 0.4, 0 0.5 millimeter VGA. Uh, the Discovery has like all this RAM built in, you know, you like flash and, and, and memory because it has um, external memory control that you can use. Um, you can, uh, it's got, you know, up to about a megabyte of flash, 320 kilobyte of SRAM, so it's a nice little upgrade. But the really interesting thing I saw, because it's kind of got all the standard stuff, right? So what peripherals are they added that are kind of new and unique. And what they added um, that's new is a TFT controller. So this is a little unusual. Um, sometimes you'll get chips that have like an 8-bit uh, controller, like a, like a 6800 or an 8080 um, TFT. So like a, you, know, you want control on ILI 9341. This uh, series of chips comes with a full 24-bit LCD TFT controller with a full H-Sync, V-Sync, data enable and clock. This is unusual. I haven't really seen, I don't think I've seen a Cortex M4 that has a full 24-bit uh, uh, LCD TFT controller in it. Usually that's reserved for like the Cortex M7s. Like we saw this um, added to uh, like the IMX RT series or the STM32 F7 or H7 series. Those might have it. This is interesting because it's a Cortex M4. So it's a you know lower power, lower cost. And uh, it has a built-in graphics uh, like palette yeah. driver. There's all sorts of things. There's all the cool stuff. Yeah, this is all the, the extras. You can see there's that display driver. Um, and, of course, you know, touch. You can have capacitive touch as well for it. Uh, it's got, you know, parallel interface. It's got camera input. So all that stuff is is pretty standard. But the TFT, I think, was very interesting, especially since you can connect that up to a um, TFT to HDMI converter and um, turn it into an HDMI output. And again, you know, the, the way they manage it is there's this graphic controller that has a palette, uh, 256 colors at a time, 24 bits, and that's how you can actually fit, you know, a 480 by 272 or 320 by 320 display in memory and still have enough memory to do what other, you know, connectivity, wireless or Bluetooth. So um, nice little chip. Uh, I am super interested in it. That's why I got the dev boards. I think we'll, we'll probably get CircuitPython running on these um, since it's an L4 series and we support the 
um, F4s. It shouldn't be too difficult to get it working, mm-hmm. at least the basics. Um, you can pick up chips from DigiKey right now, in addition to the Nucleo board and the Discovery board, which I recommend because, of course, they're all put together. And, like, ST dev boards are really cheap. You get a lot. Like, they're only, like, 20 30 bucks. But you get, like, the debugger, the RAM, the, you know, Arduino-compatible footprints, a little adapter, those fucking Grove connectors. Um, but the STM32L4P5 is the series, uh, so search for that. And uh, more packages are coming. So far, there's only two packages with, like, tons of pins. But they're definitely coming out with the going to be smaller and cheaper 48 QFNs, and I'm very excited for those. Okay, and that was Ion MPI. That's right. Now, you all asked for it. You said, I like that song so much. But I want more. I want more. So, world premiere extended version of Ion MPI. The uh, full made full by mix. Uh, Tom, who's in the UK, who works with Adafruit. Here we go. You know, I do read the comments, and someone said, I want that, and I said, absolutely. It's a great song. So that was on MPI. It's a bop. Okay. 